Well, 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 look who is back for more knowledge. I like that. Now, moving forward, what do we want to learn or what do we need? I mean, what do we want? So we are going to learn about arrays. And in the previous video, we learned about loops and we're going to use loops to process arrays. Now, what is an array? Well, an array, we know that we have variables, for example, an integer, a float, a string, blah, blah. And that holds a single value. So for example, if I say int a is equal to 10, this a variable name type of integer only holds the value of 10. It doesn't hold any other value, only 10. If I go here and say a is now equal to five, now it will hold the value of five and that is totally fine. But let's say if we want this a variable to hold multiple values, let's say if we want to hold the value of 10 and 20 and 30 and 31 and 55, how can we do that? Well, for that we can use an array. So here we can say int a and open close square bracket and we can declare an array that way, but we also need to provide a length of that array. So how many elements will that array have? And I, if I say here 10, bam, you see now, here I have declared an array of integers with the name a, which has a length of 10. What does that mean? That means that we can have 10 elements inside of this array. Now, there are multiple ways how we can declare arrays. We can say it's equal to an open close curly brackets. And here I can say it's equal to two, then three, then 66, then 78, then 12, then 53, then for example, 45, then 62, then 12, and then let's say 123. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exactly, we have 10 elements. So now we have 10 elements inside of this array. And by the way, I'm going to go here above and I'm going to copy this include string and here I'm going to type include array like this because we want to process these arrays. And how can we process them? How can we access these arrays? Well, in order to access an array, for example, let's say we want to access this number, which is number two, we will use a and open close square brackets and we will use zero like this and we have accessed this array. Why zero? Because arrays are zero based which means the first element in the array is at the value, is at the index zero. Then this one is index one. So here we have zero, then one, then two, then three. You get the point. Then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But in total, we have 10 elements in the array from zero to nine. But the last element in the array always will be the size of that array. So size minus one, always, always, always. What does that mean? Well, let's go and process this array. So I'm going to say here for int i is equal to zero, as long as i is less than, and here we're going to say std size, and we're going to use here a or pass a like this, and then I'm going to say i plus plus and voila. So what the hell am I doing here? So I'm using namespace std. When we're using namespace std, like I'm using over here, we can omit this std colon colon and just use size like this and it will still work. But if we don't have this over here, so if I remove it, then you see we have an issue. The, the, the identifier size is un, unidentified. So yeah, <laughs> the identifier is unidentified. Interesting. And also you will see here end line is in, a, in unidentified. I have issues pronouncing these words, man. It's a hard word to pronounce. Anyways, so when we use namespace std, we are going, we can omit this over here. Also here we would, by rules, if we don't use, if we omit this using space, namespace std, we would use it like this std, colon, colon. Now, the reason why I didn't bring this up earlier is because we're not going to use this in our Unreal Engine programming. This is only for printing in the console here with C++, but it is useful for us to display everything and see what is going on and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But don't worry, when we start working with C++ in Unreal, you will get more action, so don't worry. But this, these are the basic things about the language that you should know before you jump into Unreal Engine. So that is all what we are doing here. So anyways, let's go over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say std and actually I can simply say c out like this, c out and I can say less than sign, less than sign and here I can say the value of, so the value of and I can say over here the value of the integer is colon and here I can say a 
and the element that's at index i like this, but we do need to use less than less than sign. And here I'm also going to use less than less than sign and l to print everything on the second line. So let's see what this is going to, well, print in our console. So if I go over here and say yes to run my game, of course, to run my app, not the game, you will see here the value of integer is two, then three, then 66, then 77. If you pay close attention, and I'm going to take my highlight tool, so what am I doing over here? So taking my highlight tool, notice here we have two, which is on the first index. We have three, which is on the second index. We have 66 on the third, or the, well, this is on the zero index, one first index, second index, this is the fourth element on the third index, you get the point. So we are printing these in the order how we, well, set them inside of the arrays. So we are printing them in the order how we position them in the array. Now, when it comes to arrays, we need to be careful that we don't do this. For example, if I say over here, i is equal to one. Now, instead of starting the iteration from zero and accessing this element, we're going to start from one, and then we are going to go all the way over here. And we're going to omit the first element in the array. So if I go over here and if I hit the play button to run it, you see, I have omitted, we don't have two. So you need to be careful if you want to use specific indexes when it comes to an array. Also, you need to be careful here, we're using size A, which will bring the size of this array. Now, what is the size of the array? Meaning how many elements that array can accept. We denote that by typing here. You see, when we declared our array int A10, here with the number 10, we have denoted or we told C++, okay, we want this array to be able to store 10 elements inside. So it will store 10 elements. If I go over here, and if I type, let's say, another element, what do you think will happen? You see, it, it's not allowing us to do so because too many initializer values. Because we provided here 10, we said that we want only 10 values, but we provided here 11, which is, well, not going to work, as we see over here. And what will happen, and this is a common mistake beginners make, so we have the, we have 10 elements inside of this array. So you see here we have 10 elements. And if I say here for int i, which is equal to zero as long as i is less than 10, i plus plus, and if I go over here and print everything, everything is cool, everything is fine, we have no issues, everything is being printed in the console, same as the moment ago. But what would happen if I make a mistake and here instead of 10 I type 11? So now we have 11 times we're going to loop and try to access elements in the array. What will happen? Let's try it out and see. So if I go over here and play it, bam, you see? What do we have here? We have, well, this value over here, which is, well, basically not a value. But anyways, this is called an array, even though here it doesn't print out, but this is called array index out of bounds exception because we're trying to access an element in the array that does not exist because if I do something like this, if I go over here, if I quickly, let me just remove this from here. If I try to do this, let's say C out like this, and I say the value is, so the value is colon, and I say here A, and I try to access the 11th element in the array and go over here and run that, we will see again some weird number. Now, the reason for that is we don't have that element. We don't have, it doesn't exist because we're trying to access, you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have 10 elements in the array, but we're trying to access the 11th element. That, that will not work. That will not work. And we will get an array index out of bounds exception. So make sure that you are careful when it comes to that. So always you will use the size of the array. In this case, we are using, well, the built-in size, which comes with our STD here in C++. We will see how we will deal with these things inside of Unreal. Don't worry about that. So we will see everything. But here I'm just showing you how can we do things? And this works with anything else. I'm using integers and examples so far with variables, but this can work with strings. So we can say string names, and I can say here an array of names. Let's say we have five names or four. I said five, but I typed four. That's how I am. And here we can, well, say something like Carl, and I'm going to copy this. What am I doing? So copy, 
and let's go over here comma paste so again Carl comma paste comma paste so here are four so let's say here we have Kenny let's say here we have Johnny let's say here we have I don't know Gordon let's say we have Gordon okay and here we can do something like this if I pass it over here and instead of a I use names and here I'm going to say the name of my employee is call on let's try it out right now so if I go over here and print it to the console what do you think we will see well the name of my employees is Carl Kenny Johnny and Gordon good sir Gordon okay so this is how can we use arrays? And again, this is for, as I said, we use integers, we use strings, this works for doubles, this works for booleans, this works for floats, whatever, but this is an array. An array can store multiple elements inside of itself. And how you declare it? Well, first of all, you declare the type of the array that you want to have in our case, an integer, then you give it a name. And right next to the name, you will add a square bracket and inside of that square bracket you will denote with a number how many elements you want to have in that array and over here you can put those elements one by one now this is not mandatory that you should initialize your arrays like this you can also do something like this I, I don't have to initialize them I can simply do like this you see over here and here for the size I'm going to say a so here I'm going to say size A and here we can initialize our array. So we can say, for example, A and the element that's at the I index, I can say here random. So let's go here. I'm simply going to use a random function like this, which is going to generate a random number. It will return a random integer. And then what I can do is something like this. I can go over here and I can remove this from here and also remove this just a moment this I know it's tedious but hey I need to do it somebody has to you are not gonna do it so I need to do it so here we can say the value is like this and here we also need to get a and the element that's at the I index so let's see now so if I go over here and if I hit the play button what do you think will happen so pay attention the value is 41 18 thousand four hundred sixty seven six thousand blah 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 we are generating random numbers this random here it's gonna generate a random number as you can see so this is also another way how we can initialize arrays now of course in our game so when we start creating games probably I, I cannot remember I I don't think that I have ever initialized arrays and no I have not so I, I remember that I have never initialized arrays when it comes to creating a game like this instead usually what will happen you will call a function that returns an array of objects an array of values and that's how you're going to get it and then you're going to use for loops to process it so on and so forth so you get the point so this is how we can do it how can you use a while loop to process this array well you can say the same thing here so I can say int i is equal to zero while i is less than the size of the a array we can do the exact same thing that we are doing here I can say the value copy this paste it over here and then I can say I plus plus and it's the same thing I'm just gonna comment this out so that this right here is not printed so we will print or we will execute this to generate random values for and pay attention over here you see what I'm doing we are accessing the element that's at the I index and this is clever why because the I index is incremented every single time you see in every iteration currently the I is zero in the next iteration we will increment it by one which means I will be equal to I plus one which now is equal to one the next time I plus one then two then three then four you get the point and he will go up to the size of the array minus one which means if the size of the array is 10 he will go to the value that is lower which is nine where he will access the last index inside of that array so again that is also one of the clever things the programmers thought about that we're using here the i as an index to access every individual index inside of this i array which means we will access all 10 elements or all 10 indexes to place 10 elements with a random value inside so if i go back now here and if i say 
yes to run my app again you will see random values being generated over here but now we have processed them with the while loop now of course you will not use a while loop to process arrays you will use a for loop later on we will also see a for each loop don't worry about that we will see when we start creating some complex games and, and some simple games, so don't worry. But I just wanted to show you as an example how we can also use a while loop to process arrays. And uh, yeah, this was it. This is all you need to know about arrays for now. And uh, fire from Zuriagam. I will see you guys in another video.